This is a Yeston Cute Pet RX 580, arguably the greatest GPU design of all time. It's certainly my favourite. The RX 580 came out in 2017, has 8 gigs of VRAM, competed with the 1060 when it came out, and is currently the most common dedicated AMD GPU in the Steam hardware survey. At least it was when I wrote this. Let's stick it in a PC and see how well it performs against 2023's big releases, to see whether the RX 580 is still worth the $80 or so that it costs if you buy a non-cute pet one on eBay. Which isn't actually that much more than each of these games cost me. Bear in mind this is also a slightly cut down version of the RX 580, having only 2048 stream processors compared to the regular cards 2304. So yes, that means I paid over the odds for a slower GPU just because that has a funny face on it. Pro gamer moves only on this channel. Firstly, I have to get Resolve out the way. AMD cards just aren't very good at this, and this is a prime demonstration of that, taking almost an hour to encode my standardized 4K video test, and over seven minutes on Blender Classroom. I wouldn't buy one of these if you're going to be doing anything creative or productive. Luckily, this card meets every single FSR requirement, so we can make use of that in every game I'm about to show you. Unfortunately, it doesn't support the DP4A instruction set that is required for Intel's slightly cut down version of XESS. Keep an eye on that because I'm doing a FSR versus DP4A XESS comparison pretty soon. Say that five times fast. Now this GPU doesn't actually meet the minimum requirements for Dead Space, but it is Steam Deck verified, and the 580 is definitely stronger than a Steam Deck. Performance is pretty great. This is 1080p medium with FSR on quality, and it sticks to 50 to 60 FPS consistently. Perfectly playable in a slow paced game like this. I tried lowering the settings, but the visual downgrade, especially in FSR, is too much. And it starts to make the game look like a blurry mess. It still has shader stutters though. I'm going to need counselling for all the shader compilation problems we see nowadays. Hogwarts Legacy's minimum spec is the 470, which should be slightly slower than the 580, obviously. But leaving it on auto with balanced FSR gives very good results, usually around 40 FPS, jumping to well over 60 in interiors. Thanks to the generous auto aim, the game is more than playable, and it still looks very nice. Atomic Heart's minimum spec actually calls for an R9 390, which is older but about equivalent to the RX 470 Hogwarts wants. This game was shown off with heavy RT effects and a NVIDIA partnership, but then when it launched, RT was basically MIA. Weird, but not a problem for the 580 because it doesn't support RT. Good news is that at 1080p medium with FSR on quality mode, it looks and runs great. It never dropped below 60, even in the taxing initial car slash plane crash, and often goes into the triple digits. Sadly, that can't fix the awful dialogue. Capcom's RE engine has a rep for being extremely high performance. I even got RE2 Remake running on a Core 2 Duo and a horrible OEM R5340X with 2 gigs of VRAM. Needless to say, the 580 has absolutely zero issues with RE4 Remake, even in the extremely taxing Village Fight right at the start of the game. We stay above 60 almost the entire time, only dropping below when there are alpha effects and a lot of enemies on screen. Of course, there wouldn't be alpha effect if I was better at the game. The 580 is a great way to play Resident Evil 4. Where's everyone going? Bingo? And lastly, Microsoft's surprise mega hit Hi Fi Rush. I adore this game. How Tango Gameworks, a studio with a reputation for horror games, came out with this is completely beyond me. Regardless, is extremely dependent on timing, and so needs to be running consistently to make it even a little bit playable. Luckily, it is. At 1080p native with low settings, not that you can tell in this game, it's always above 60 and frequently hits triple digits while exploring, mostly sticking to about 80 or 90 in actual combat. If you like character action, Bayonetta Devil May Cry, you have to play this game. It is a steal at 30 bucks. I think that's pretty conclusive. AMD's reputation for aging like fine wine is upheld in a very impressive fashion. If you'd bought one of these for $229 in 2017 and were still playing top-end games at 60 FPS on it six years later, 
I think you'd be satisfied with your purchase. As for buying one used today, I think it's a great option. You could pick something like this up on eBay for about 80 bucks, drop it into an old HP or Dell workstation, and turn a slow but functional computer into something that can play Resident Evil 4. Assuming you're okay with using one of those sketchy SATA to PCI power cables. Me and Wan Wan will see you next time.